let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. What's going on, Philadelphia Eagles fans? What's going on, world? Philly, Philly, the fam. We are back with another one, man. It looks like the Philadelphia Eagles got some interesting battles ahead of them. They got some interesting battles. I'm sorry. I always wanted to be a, a, a villain in a, in a movie, but not that good. But at the end of the day, we are going to go over today the top three battles that I think that the Eagles are going to be seeing this training camp. I'm very excited because I think that this is the first time in a while, to be honest with you, that I feel like every position has a real comp competition going. I feel like everywhere, with the exception of probably wide receiver one and two, running back one and quarterback one, has real competition. There's competition across the offensive line. There's competition in the wide receiver room. There's competition on the defense almost every single position so i'm excited to see what happens i think that competition breeds greatness I, I truly do i think that when the eagles have to fight within their own system it makes the, the players better right it, a lot of these guys are coming in with chips on their shoulders already so it feels like going in there having a fight for their spot is only going to make them hungrier so i want to get into this i don't want to make it a long drawn out process you know i like to make my 30 minute videos now today is not going to be a 30 minute video i promise you so before we get into all that be sure to hit the like hit the subscribe join the family we're on the road to 1 billion quadrillion so i would appreciate you if you you know you know join that ride man it's like a good ride but let's get right into it first one i'm going to start off with is going to be right guard now we can throw makai beckton in here we can throw dylan mcmahon in here i think dylan was more of a center from what i'm hearing so i i didn't really put him in here makai beckton he would be like the biggest guard that's ever played the position so it'd be interesting it's gonna be a switch you know it's gonna be a change for him so it'll be it'll be interesting to see if he's able to do that um but it's gonna be fun this is gonna be a fun spot i personally think matt hennessy should get looks at center i mean his last year fully starting two years ago he played fully at center i think he had 988 snaps at center he's played left guard as well don't get me wrong but under 300 snaps total his career so far so look you got taylor keegan who we just drafted right you got tyler Steen, who we just drafted last year so those are the two guys that i think are really going to be kind of clawing out for that position I think that Tyler Steen probably has the nod already. Um, now, obviously, things can change, right? He can go into camp. He can look bad or Ty, uh, Taylor Keegan could just look really, really good, and he takes that spot. But right now, just looking at it, I think that this is Tyler Steen's job to lose. They obviously took him pretty darn high last year. I think he was a third-round pick, if I'm not mistaken. It took him pretty high. So they liked Tyler Steen last year. He did get some time. We saw him in the games. I felt he looked a little bit better at tackle, but he looked, he, you know, it is what it is. He's a guard. They want to play him at guard. We'll see what he does. I, I think that it's going to be an interesting battle because Matt Hennessy, again, he's played so many snaps at center that if you're trying to move Cam Jurgens back to center, which it looks like they're going to do, if you're trying to move Cam Jurgens back to center, Matt Hennessy is a guy you want to keep healthy. And reason why I say that, because if you don't have Matt Hennessy, Who's your backup center? Dylan McMahon? I, I, Taylor Keegan, maybe? Tyler Steen? Like, who are you going to put there at center? So, Matt Hennessy might, unfortunately, <laughs> be kind of X'd out from starting at the guard position just because of that. I mean, realistically, especially if he's the same as Taylor Keegan or, or the same as Tyler Steen, I think that it makes sense for the organization to go ahead and protect a guy that could be a key backup for you. Again, if we lose, knock on wood, uh, if we are to lose Cam Jurgens for any amount of time it really begs the question who's going to be your center and center is a cog you know a lot of times they don't get most of the time they don't get the they don't get the accolades they don't get the glory they don't get the you know the, everybody doesn't always talk about centers we, we in philadelphia we're a little bit different because we had jason kelsey one of the best centers of all time but they, they they're not usually the the sexy piece but if you lose him it is a huge detriment to your offense so i think that personally right now tyler steen is probably going to be the guy that gets the nod like i said but it's going to be a battle and i think that taylor keegan has every shot to go ahead and win i think that matt hennessy might be a little handicapped um and then you look at like i said makai beckton i don't know if that's really gonna work dylan mcmahon i keep hearing he's more of a center so maybe they just try to kitty corner him at center and try to get him to learn that position as well as possible and see what goes on from there but i, I think that on the offensive line we've continued to 
you know, allocate assets to that offensive line. And it's shown dividends. It's paid huge dividends. We have right now every single position locked up for the future outside of outside of right tackle. So and I'm assuming that between Taylor Keegan or Tyler Steen, we're going to find a starter between those two. If, J if Stoutland thinks that they are good enough to go out there and battle each other, I think that they're good enough to start for this Philadelphia Eagles team. So I truly do believe that the Eagles now have things locked up for a good while for a good while so i'm happy with that i'm excited to see what happens with that battle you guys let me know in the bottom uh or in the comments excuse me who you think wins that battle who do you think has the the edge right now now the next one is probably going to be the most fun i'm going to be real with you all right and, and in a weird way this one and the next one kind of go together but we'll get there when we get there now cornerback two i say cornerback two because i'm almost positive that darius lay is going to be our cornerback one i'm i'm almost certain in that Darius, like, uh, barring a some kind of weird, you know, event, tragic event, or something like that, or injury, or something like that, I do not see this Darius Slay not being our cornerback one. So now it opens up the field for the cornerback two slot and for the you know slot cornerback spot, which we could have kind of talked about, which I'll kind of talk about in here. But look, you got Quinion Mitchell, obviously the first round pick for the Philadelphia Eagles. You got Cooper DeGene, who is. The guy that a lot of people are talking about, he's going to be the nickel guy. They're talking about bringing him in on nickel uh, packages, letting him be the slot guy, letting him kind of learn the defense as he goes. So, I mean, good good for Cooper, to be honest with you, because if Cooper was taken in the top 20 where he should have been taken, he wouldn't have gotten a second to learn. He would have been the, the automatic starter. He would have had to be the guy for them. So, you have Quinion, you have Cooper. I think that it's going to be a very, very fun battle between those two because I do believe Cooper wants to play on the outside. I don't think that he wants to just be a nickel guy. So I, I think that it's going to be a, a really fun battle between those two. Right now, I think that Quinion probably has the edge against the, I mean, he got drafted first. I know that sounds stupid, but that's what the Eagles do sometimes. They, you know, it is what it is. But I think that right now, uh, Quinion probably has the edge between the two. Isaiah Rogers is a very interesting guy because a lot of people, you know, a lot of Eagles fans are saying that he's a slot cornerback. He's going to be a slot cornerback at the, you know, for the Eagles. But he's played outside. He's played outside for most of, if not all of his career. I know he has some uh, uh, slot snaps, but not a lot. And I know a lot of people go back to his college days and talk about him playing slot in the college. Uh, it's a lot different, especially when you're playing for UMass. So I, I, I like Isaiah Rogers. I hope I spelled his name right now that I'm looking at it. I don't think I did. Uh, but at the end of the day, I like Isaiah Rogers. I... It, it's going to be very interesting to see what he does, but I think he's more so on the next tier than he is with the Cooper Dijon and or Dijon, excuse me, and Quinion Mitchell. I think that those two are kind of by themselves, and then it goes to Isaiah Rogers, Kaylee Ringo, Eli Ricks, probably in that order. To be 100% honest with you, if I had to, you know, put my depth chart today and say these are the guys that I'm starting, I'm probably starting Quinion Mitchell at cornerback two. Probably Cooper Dijon is his, his first you know in first in if something happens isaiah rogers is probably the next up maybe you do put him at slot kaylee ringo is probably the guy right after that and then eli ricks kind of falls in right after them i like all these guys i really do and this is probably the first time in my life as an eagles fan that i can realistically say we're set at the cornerback position for a while so i think that this is going to be a really really interesting battle and the reason why i say it kind of bleeds into what we're talking about next the next one is going to be wide receivers and the reason why it bleeds in is because we're looking for a punt returner as well now Brenton Covey could be that guy right but he doesn't really do much else he's not on the he's not really on the radar to be the wide receiver we'll talk about that but the reason why I bring it up Cooper DeGene and Isaiah Rogers both have punt return uh, capabilities kick return capabilities could one of those guys be a guy that really you know takes that spot and leaves Brenton Covey with no job. That's something to really keep your eye on. Punt return, kick return is something that I was going to add as one of these three, but I felt like the positions were a little bit more important. But I, I think that at the end of the day, you look at punt returner, you look at kick, ret kick returner, we, we basically allocated a spot to one guy that did one thing, you know, and I, Brenton Covey did it at a very high rate. He was one of the best punt returners in the league. Uh, I think he was 
top two, top three when it came to punt return average. So, I, you know, it's going to be hard to move on from him. But when you have guys that can do multiple things that are multiple and, you're, you know, can play defense or can play offense, but can also give you special teams uh, uh, reps, it, very important, very important. So it's going to be interesting to see if one of those guys takes that spot. Now, the next guy I want to talk, the next uh, guys I want, a group of guys I want to talk about is that wide receiver three spot. I said it earlier, wide receiver one, wide receiver two, we good. We we know who we got. We know who we want. We know who's going to be there. But at the end of the day, wide receiver three is a spot we got to worry about and, and look at. We drafted Anaya Smith. We drafted Johnny Wilson. We picked up Devontae Parker, and we picked up Paris Campbell. Now, Brent Kobe, I, I was just talking about him. He's been on this team. It will be interesting to see if he's able to carve out a role on this offense. I don't know if he will be. I don't know what he can do for this offense. Maybe a really good slot player. I don't know. But Anaya Smith is somebody that I have talked about for a long time. I, I When I was doing, but you can go back and look at him, all the best of enemies drafts i've talked about anaya smith a bunch he's a guy that i usually took around where they took him just because i i knew that there was something about this kid he has he's a very good route runner he's twitchy he's not the fastest he's not the quickest he's not the, definitely not the strongest he's obviously not the biggest at five nine but he gives you Everything Brenton Covey, Covey gives you, but he also gives you that offensive capability. I feel like he can be a big part of this offense at wide receiver three. We know that Kellen Moore likes to use his wide receiver threes. And if you want more information on Anaya Smith, I definitely, definitely, and I'll leave a card up. Um, but I, I definitely think you should, should go listen to the interview I did with Fran Duffy. He really breaks him down well. And Johnny Wilson. Uh, but Johnny Wilson, another guy, he is just... I know I keep saying this word, but this is this guy's intriguing, man. Like so big, six seven. We haven't had that since Harold Carmichael, right? So a six seven wide receiver that can run a four four. He he's strong. He's fast. He is a little skinny, uh, but he runs routes very well. Again, go listen to what Fran Duffy said. Fran Duffy definitely broke it down for us really really well and made me excited about Johnny Wilson. But again there are negatives right both of all these guys have negatives that's why they're wide receiver threes not wide receiver ones so anaya smith is a little bit small you get worried about that johnny wilson is big but he drops a lot of balls so that's going to be the worry is if they can come into the training camp and show that they've improved in areas that maybe have concerned other teams prior they have a really good shot of making this team i think that this is my that's how I'm probably setting my depth chart up right now. Obviously, it's still early, but I would probably have Anaya Smith giving him the edge at wide receiver three. I will probably have Johnny Wilson as the, the first one to come in. Britton Covey, I would probably have in. Now, Devontae Parker and Paris Campbell, one of those are probably going to stay. One of those are probably going to get cut. That's that's how I'm feeling. I'm, I'm, I, I assume Devontae Parker is probably going to get cut at some point. Paris Campbell is the guy that I think will make the roster, and I think that Brian Covey has a good shot of making this roster. So if we go through the numbers, right, you have uh, AJ Brown, you have Devontae Smith. I'm adding Anaya Smith, Johnny Wilson, Brenton Covey, and Paris Campbell. So you have six wide receivers going into the, the season. I think that that makes sense. And I think that you have, obviously, your wide receiver one and two, they have, you know, kind of different styles that really complement each other. But even when you go down the list, I think that you have even more styles that kind of complement each other and don't really clash, right? You can have Anaya Smith out there with an AJ Brown and still feel confident. You can have a Johnny Wilson out there with a Devontae smith and still feel confident so i i i feel good i feel good i feel very good now my 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 personal favorite if you guys care at all my personal favorite matchup is going to be the the, the cornerbacks i just it hasn't been many times that Eagles fans can look at cornerbacks and be like, we have a future. So I'm excited to see what they're going to be. I'm excited to see just the, the fight. And, and I said this again with, with Fran Duffy, and I really mean it. I'm excited to see what these guys' personalities are because that's a huge part of becoming a Philadelphia Eagle is how are you going to be on, obviously, the field, but off the field as well. How are you going to mesh with these guys? And I think that we're going to see all that very, very soon. So I'm... <laughs> Ooh, I just got chills. I'm excited, y'all. I'm excited. Y'all let me know what y'all thinking. What battles are you guys ex excited to see? Who do you think are going to win the battles that I brought up? But other than that, other than that, y'all know what it is. Y'all know what it is. Y'all should be proud of me. This isn't a 45-minute video. So hit that like if you're happy about that. But y'all know what it is. It's Fly Eagles Fly. And, it's, and we are out, chill.